Hello and welcome to all of you. Welcome to Erikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh and in this video we shall discuss the feature news for today, 31st March 2022, which is on draft, draft India data accessibility and use policy 2022. This is a draft policy, however, indicates a lot of things about how the government envisages the usage of non-personal data. Non-personal data further segregated into three categories and its utility we will understand in this video what are the repercussions of uh, policy like this what are the advantages does the industry face hurdles in this what are the advantages for various stakeholders what are the issues associated how india is going to uh, propel a five trillion dollar economy with the help of the uh, data policy so let's start this discussion but before that a welcome to all the participants netra kriti amlan peace lover welcome back niranjan vivek tiasha welcome all of you ashish Hima, welcome. Kanupriya, you also, welcome to you. And then we also have Bhabani joining in just now. Pooja, Bhabani, welcome to all of you. Kim, good evening. All right. Uh, a couple of conversations here. It's getting hotter day by day. And then people saying that uh, they could be, uh, this could be the hottest year possible on earth uh, in the contemporary times. Save yourself. There's a heat wave. Try to drink some, you know, Conventional drinks like Aam Panna or uh, take some onion in your pocket. Not pocket, but then if you eat some onion, I think it uh, prevents us catching glue. And then uh, what a diverse country India is. There are places where there's rainfall happening, 33 degree of temperature and then we have 44 as well. So uh, save yourself from the heat. That is the most important thing. Heat wave catches us and then it takes a toll for two to three days. Doesn't go after a simple sleep. Takes a while. So keep yourself hydrated. Keep uh, studying well. And if possible, try to maintain a normal body temperature for yourself. How do you do that? Uh, if you're not in a very controlled atmosphere, controlled environment, then uh, possibly uh, my ears, they, go, they get hot um, at times. So I, I, you know, cool them by putting some water at times in my limbs, hands, feet, uh, limbs and face. So this is one way you can uh, work around. Otherwise, uh, if there is a scope of uh, some controlled atmosphere, controlled temperature, that would be great for optimal studying. It actually helps, that I have seen for myself. I, I would ensure to try to study without fans. I would try that. That, that was back in 2013-14. That's where my parents came and they said that, no, you need certain, you know, controlled atmosphere. And once I was provided, I felt like a Buddha. Buddha who got the enlightenment, understanding that middle path is the way out. So, little money to be spent or maybe some certain money to be spent, but the returns are uh, magnified. We would start appreciating the technology and comfort and we'll keep technology comfort ahead of the chlorofluorocarbons these, uh, these air conditioners are releasing, right? So um, it has got its cost, absolutely. But then uh, at, at receiving end, it definitely gives comfort for our immediate goal. This is where we have to choose what is our goal, the immediate goal to, serve, to be served first or the larger goal to be served, right? A compromise should not be made. Anyhow, getting back to the article in focus, good uh, conversation. Yes, I had a question to ask from all of you, which I had posted. That was on, uh, uh, yes, study from home is good or uh, away from home is better. So, you know, you could anyhow, anyway, anytime respond to a question like this. But I am expecting a response to understand what is your, uh, uh, you know, the perception of it. Okay, and then what about hydrogen vehicles? Just like battery vehicles, similarly hydrogen vehicles again um, in experimental stage of formation and some very high end paying uh, cars are existent in the country and abroad. But then to make it usable for uh, everybody, see hydrogen fuel also has got its own um, issues, right? Safety issues, safety concerns, scalability concerns. So once that is made uh, uh, to an industrial, industrial scale, it will be available to all of us as well, right? It is considered as the few, not the future. So that's it. And uh, okay, okay. Let's go ahead with what is in the news. The draft India data accessibility and use policy. We covered an update on this. This is a complete feature news. A small policy document. I would like to share that document with you here and uh, talk about what is the. Uh, proposal by the government. Before that, we, we understand the data, the data that is created around us. It is a new oil, right? I had explained once, I remember very clearly, geo, right? Geo, geo. If you turn around, O is the first word, mirror image of this, mirror image of this would be O and then I 
and then J would turn into L. Oh my God. Data, Geo is the data driven company, right? That is the new oil. Absolutely, that's true. Data is the new oil. It fuels India's revolution. India's revolution into digital economy. India's revolution into medicine. India's revolution into information technology. India's revolution into commerce business, e-commerce. India's revolution into manufacturing. Every day, newspapers in, in Hindustan Times, in the first and second page, I see some data and five, six important graphs. I find that to be important. And when I move to uh, uh, the Mint, I find something else relevant and another you know set of data and uh, entities all interpreted well. And then when I move to Hindu, in the center page, opinion, op-ed page, I find another uh, set of data. And then when I move to Indian Express, there is another level of uh, data, you know, creation. So much of data and then over and above comes the reports from United Nations and uh, other governmental bodies from India. And over and above those, there are NGOs which are re revealing their own uh, information and set of instructions. So, uh, point being, data is the new oil. That is absolutely true. But not all data is redundant. The way it is to be curated, the way it is to be uh, uh, magnified and... Uh, uh, and, and vetted into vital information for use, for policy, for understanding, for interpreting, for extrapolating, that becomes very significant. And this is where government says only certain data can be utilized for, for these kind of purposes. There are two kinds of data. One is personal data and the other one is non-personal data. What is a personal data? Example, my height is a personal data. My weight is a personal data. My name or the place to which I belong is a personal data. Not to be asked for. Right? It's my personal data. It is my personal entity. My personal life, keep it away from whatever it is, is uh, non-personal. Right? So, uh, my preferences of food, my eating choices, my behavior, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of things around it are personal in nature. So, all that data is not to be mingled with uh, the non-personal data. Non-personal data, on the other hand, are of many kinds, right? There is one kind of data which government collects through census, surveys, that is one level of data. Another kind of data that is getting created through uh, e-commerce business or commerce business, right? For example, uh, I book uh, a taxi, a cab from uh, uh, my phone app and uh, this data is shared with the cab company. So, the cab company might not require my name, apart from authentication, might not require my age, but then they know what time I travel. Is that not data? That is data. And if that data is, is created for all the users in a specific place, imagine that data could be utilized to understand what is the uh, demand of cabs at a place at, at that time. Is it the morning hours where everybody is looking at, you know, availability of cabs and hence, if there is a shortfall, there will be a surge in price of cabs in the morning. See, vital data or traffic will be high at these times. Indicators. So, this is another kind of data and uh, this is another kind of data. Let us understand each of the kind of data. And uh, by the way, in personal data, there is another data called a sensitive data. Right? This is the most important data which needs the highest level of protection. Would anybody want to share the kind of medical issues they are going, going through? No. Would anybody want to share the level of salary that they earn? Ugly then somebody will come and say, Sir, I need some money. Or Amlan, I know you, you have got a lot of finances, Amlan, some money. So Amlan and Bhani would never share their, uh, their sensitive data with people, right? Because they know that uh, this is, <laughs> this will be counter, uh, counteractive on them, right? So sensitive data is a further segregation of personal data which is quite, quite sensitive to that person. So, this data excluded for non-personal data, government has introduced a draft policy in the public space ki is data ko how to be utilized, how to monetize, how to reveal this data for private usage, consumption and how to convert all this data into useful information for converting India, India into a $5 trillion digital economy. Alright. So, uh, uh, let us understand the kind of data. Right. So, one committee was formed, uh, you know, a couple of years back and this committee came out uh, with a conclusion that, uh, uh, that there are three kinds of non-personal data. See, so what is non-personal data? In its most basic form, non-personal data is any data which does not contain personal identifiable information. 
identifiable information which does not identify with one unique individual now if you know for example i th that's the reason i don't want to talk about names of few people and reveal some content because see again this is non private non personal no and i cannot make it personal officially so if x belongs to uh, a region in northeast temperature uh, 25 degrees celsius because of rainfall if y belongs to a place in the plains and the temperature is 33 degrees celsius and if z belongs to a place uh, not z z is zelensky and uh, freedom no so if a belongs to a place such symbols i tell you if a belongs to a place from uh, uh, the mountains and the temperature here is uh, uh, 20 uh, 28 degrees celsius suppose this now right now these data somehow make you identifiable and identifiable right somehow somehow not not accurately but somehow identifiable in a small data set group they make you identifiable but if i randomize this if i don't put your names here right if i if i don't put your actual names here whichever whatever it is x y and a this will make it randomized content there will be general data for people and they will not speak about people they will speak more about the places then they will not speak about the people so this becomes more of non personal they cannot be identified to a personal information or person per se they will not point out to one person through this this data and so this is called as non personal data right any personal data can also be converted into non personal data provided the vital information is taken away from it right so when you see speak of non personal data around with this policy is designed is getting designed the three kinds of uh, data that they speak of all data collected by government and its agencies like census municipal uh, uh, corporations uh, important surveys which are conducted national family health survey online surveys right half yearly surveys they are the the public non personal data public government public public non personal data all data identifiers about people who who are in the same geographical location religion job or common common social interest will form a community non personal data community non personal data for example the data collected by ride hailing apps telecom companies electricity distribution companies right so this is community non personal data for example of the people using igl indraprasth gas limited gas connections at home how much of gas is withdrawn at what time of the day is it withdrawn right during holidays what is the withdrawal during uh, uh, puja season or uh, cultural festival season what is the withdrawn so this is community non personal data uber cabs non uh, community non personal data and the third kind of data that has been declared is uh, private non personal data right can be uh, defined as those which are produced by individuals which can be right from app of proprietary software or knowledge okay ji ye kya hai proprietary software or knowledge amazon i have put my data so this is private non personal data private non personal data see so when amazon gives me ads basis of what i have searched on amazon or google gives me ads on basis of what i have searched this is private non personal data this is not mine but this is private belonging to me community and then public i hope you are able to differentiate between each of them right now government has said that they will bring about a policy so three kind of non personal data okay and two kind of personal data which is sensitive and then personal data and then furthermore is the sensitive uh, data within the personal data right so data collected by the government administrative data survey data institutional data transactional data right so all the transactions made by the government enam oh yesterday i had asked you people a question tell me the names of some platforms where uh, you know online transactions are getting made i remember we were speaking of digital agriculture right some digital transformation in agriculture and you people didn't respond why not enam enam is one uh, market e national agriculture market right institutional data collected by the government survey data administrative all of these data is collected by the government they become public records right public data so once you segregate the data then you understand then the government understands how to further uh, utilize it right so government has going to create a body called as a body called as 
India Data Office. India Data Office under Ministry of uh, uh, Electronics and Information Technology. And India Data Office is the central authority which is going to create uh, the complete set of data along with all ministries. It will coordinate. See, every ministry takes in data. Every ministry will know what data it is taking, what is personal data, what is non-personal data. Personal data is never to be shared. Non-personal data has to be shared and then they will create a database amongst themselves and they will coordinate with India Data Office. India Data Office, right? They will streamline and consolidate data access and sharing of non-personal data repositories. This is picked up from directly from the policy paper across the government and other stakeholders, right? So when they know what data is to be shared, they will further randomize the data in case it is private data. See, there is private public private data also, no? private uh, non non personal data. For example, my Amazon deals that will be randomized further through algorithms, and then it will be shared with not only these ministries but other stakeholders, other stakeholders, private companies, organizations, so that they can utilize them to further market, to further increase the sales, to convert India into a digital economy. Let me give you an example. If, if A has a particular disease, if B needs regular supply of medicines, if C needs to go for a medical checkup every once in a year or once in six months, this is very vital data, personal data. But then personal data cannot be shared about individuals. But then can government share data with private organizations that uh, two crore people in general require dosage of these medicines? Um, 50 lakh of people every year go for x-ray checkups. So let us not create uh, a, a, an ecosystem for importing x-ray machines. In fact, start creating the x-ray machines in the country. This is what is required. And, and since this is required, uh, government will start sharing with uh, from the India Data Office uh, an autonomous, autonomous body by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. What are the conditions in which data will be shared with uh, the private agencies? what data has to be monetized and what is not to be monetized some data will be available free of cost to everybody but some data will further be monetized right so this is uh, the the simplest central architecture india data office various ministries to coordinate and data only specific data to be regulated uh, data to be randomized these are some keywords to use let us look at the preamble of the uh, the policy non personal data is a valuable resource Valuable resource offering better ways of service delivery for citizens, businesses, governments. With increasing digitization and engagement, the volume of data is also increasing exponentially. Oh, very much. Providing opportunities for better governance, service delivery, innovation in sectors for uh, critical for societal transformation. Critical for societal transport transformation. G let me give you a few examples here. Energy data, energy consumption, peak power consumption, day night consumption. Uh, weekly consumptions, consumptions during holiday times, this is all is being created right now because we are having an, because we are creating an integrated data, integrated energy grid. Look at the finance data. I have sp spoken of fi aggregator, financial aggregator. Remember, uh, a person, an entity would be created which would have all our, uh, all bank accounts at one place which would know what are our phone numbers, what are our spendings at all the other places. This is not to ensure that they scrutinize our taxes. But then if at a centralized location we have all our financial data, this is easier for us. How? When we go and take loans, our credibility, our credit worthiness will be checked immediately. We will get loans faster than before. We will have all our papers at one place. Government will be able to also scrutinize easily right private agencies it will not be a tough time for them to conduct a background check on each individual so financial uh, data uh, you know aggregator similarly we have medical data aggregator all this we have covered a feature news on finance and medical data aggregator medical data one agency to be created which will know uh, for each of us right and this will be private this will be private information both of us right so all the private information will be kept private but if it has to be made public in a way then it will become randomized it will not be uh, you know uh, it will not pinpoint back to any of us so that is the best advantage of this medical data for example my data about uh, about if i take medicines and what all medicines i take which all uh, doctors have i referred to at all the points of time 
all the doctors that I have referred to and what have been their recommendations, which are hospitals, what is my medical insurance, all of them will be there with the medical aggregator. See, similarly, if you look at the city governance, uh, district governance, everything is getting is going to get converted to online, right? I was reading uh, and this is long time back, I, was, I, I had read about uh, place uh, Switzerland, that's where if you drive at a constant speed, I think that was 60 kilometers per hour, you would not find traffic lights on, on your way, red lights. You would only find green if you drive at a particular pace. That is, that is the way the cities are designed that, uh, you know, at a particular place, the crossings are designed in a way, the timings are designed in a way that you would find green light if you start at a green at one place. Imagine this. You would not encounter red lights. Just because the traffic is decent, just because you are driving at a decent, decent place, the distance, everything has been tracked. This is called as digital governance. India is looking at governance from this perspective of um, urban life, of rural life, spotting online which are the places where uh, the charging stations, uh, EV, electric vehicle charging stations are available, knowing which are the places, which are the dump sites, knowing which are the places for uh, uh, the recycling of uh, uh, e-wastage, electronic e-wastage. So this is what is called as digital governance, right? Everything is avail available online. The, the, uh, now, IGNU offers services online in such smart ways. It was only developing 10 years back, 15 years back. But now, one need not go to any of the IGNU regional centers. They can apply online. They can start studying online. Exams to be conducted at their regional hubs, study centers. And then uh, the degree awarded in due course, digital governance. This is being looked at from the perspective of growth of commerce also. And India is only following the developed countries because this has happened. Amazon, see Amazon, the, uh, the, the person who owns the maximum money around the whole world is the owner of Amazon. Jeff Bezos and, and, and Elon Musk fighting for the first position. But then second, first only, no, Amazon. Did he have family wealth? No, yeah, he created Amazon out of himself. So, point I'm making is this is all about uh, what India is learning from the developed country. The top 10 companies, half of them are digital, half of them are in technology, high tech companies, all in uh, uh, digital space, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. What have I missed? All these companies, all technology companies dependent on data. In fact, uh, Tesla and uh, SpaceX also uh, decently dependent on data only, directly, right? So, India's ambition of becoming a 5 trillion uh, uh, dollar digital economy can be successful if India uses data very well. Because that is how we will be able to target the audience well. But then it also monetizes the market, no? Right? Monetizes. It can be, it can be both ways. We are walking over a thin fence. On one side is public welfare. On the other side is increased monetization of every service, more commercialization, more of uh, uh, availability, but then more of, uh, you know, people available to sell products. So maximize, the objective is to maximize the excess and use of quality non-personal data, not any data, but there'll be curation of non-personal data. Not every non-personal data will be shared. Some qualified content will be shared at two levels, one free of cost and the other some monetization, some payment for some data, right? Then evaluation and monitoring of this data with data authority data organization right ido india data office right creation of public digital platforms public platforms right i remember having a discussed a uh, topic uh, called as the uh, digital uh, public goods digital public goods so these are those goods which are available to everybody free of cost public goods available for public use Right? For all the people, at all the time, there will be no competition in availability of this content. Right? Uh, maintaining the privacy and security as well. So this is where regulations will come with the help of data office itself, saying what are the data which cannot be used, what are the data which has to be randomized, what are the issues related to it. Right? Increasing the availability of data sets of national importance. See, data will also be segregated into uh, the data which is uh, high profile content, we will come to it, right? Improving the overall compliance. This is the objective and purpose of the policy. The principles to be used for, you know, having this policy in place are identification of data sets. What are the data sets to be shared? Names? No, not at all. Age? 
No, it has to be randomized, right? Age profiles can be shared, but age perspective may not be shared. Similarly, uh, religion content, no, not to be shared. The religion specific data will not be shared. It has been made very clear, very, very specifically. So what are the data sets? I hope you understand what I'm saying. But yes, food preference possibly could be shared, right? So one of us would uh, want to eat uh, uh, sushi. The other person would want to eat uh, uh, sambar rice. The third person would want to eat um, uh, Kashmiri Mazwa. The fourth person would uh, prefer to eat uh, Gujarati Kadi. Right. So uh, that uh, and, and what is the proportion of people eating the different kind of food? These are the data sets that we are speaking of. There must be transparency. The data should be available to each stakeholder without any, uh, you know, without any partisan, without any favoritism, without any nepotism. Right. So uh, interoperability, integrity and technology agnostic. The data can be accessed from digital devices of Apple origin of Android origin, of Windows origin, each of them, right? So technology agnostic, right? Then uh, see, equal and non-discriminatory access. That is the point. Protection of intellectual property. If a person has got an intellectual property associated, anyhow, they should be protected as well, right? So India data office to be created. Every ministry shall have data management unit headed by chief data officer, right? Every ministry will speak of a chief data officer, which will be handling all the data, coordinate with Indian data office about all the data it is creating. So one organization is India data office. And along with that, there is a data council, data council, a council of people who will be aiding, suggesting important requirements. So this is an executive body. And this is a body to oversee the work to suggest the uh, changes required, right? So India data council, India data office. Yeah, yeah, though the words which you should remember. Right, India Data Council will be supported by dedicated support unit to coordinate sharing across ministries. Okay, what else? Data anonymization and privacy preservation. Right, so if there is personal content and that needs to be shared, some reference it needs to be anonymized. Right, reference anonymization tools and decision making frameworks will be provided to all ministries to assist data officers in managing data sharing request. If there is a request to share a specific kind of data, for example, railway ministry being asked to share data about a proportion of people traveling in the summer months, then that data could be shared provided there is anonymization of the content, right? What is uh, their home address? What is their uh, possibly names, right? So data sharing request will be handled by them provided they have anonymization tools. All ministries must comply with the anonymization standards Right. Any sharing happening within the legal framework will prevent misuse of data and assure security, integrity and confidentiality. All right. So data policy for non-personal data. This is what it is. Data retention. The data will be retained for a specific data, uh, uh, data set uh, while manage, managing and sharing some of it. And they will be based on Niti Aayog notifications. All right. This is some uh, content about the data policy, draft data policy that we have. Ministry of Electronics Information Technology released a draft policy on data accessibility and use. Remember, so I'm quickly going through this and I'll summarize this for you, right? So what are the, uh, you know, increased significance of data, the new oil, the digital management, digital economy, digital business, public delivery of services. Imagine yesterday I wanted to create a, a PPF account. I didn't have to go to the uh, bank at all. I got it created just with a click of few buttons, right? Sim simple, as simple as that. Today, we don't even need to go out to fetch our groceries, everything available at the click of few buttons, public service delivery, right? And uh, government service delivery, all of it available to us, right? Certificates available online, DG Locker. Enhance in efficiency and innovation, all of them happening through data available. See, every time I give examples for each of them, the reason is it should be embedded that with every point, every thing that you raise, there has to be something which uh, makes you closer to the reality, the practical life, right? So data driven culture, this is what is the age of day, age of the day. And that is why we need a policy like this, right? The types of government data which is collected, but no, don't, don't only speak about government data, speak in the language that I spoke of, right? So the non-personal data is of three, three kinds. Non-personal data is of uh, three kinds. Can you please mention all the three kinds? If you remember, public, 
and then uh, this is uh, ah, anyhow if you don't remember i'll mention major proposals india data council india data officer in each uh, department and then india data office these are the three two institutions india data council india data office these are the two institutions all right applicability all generated data will be available for uh, um, for the non personal data apply to all the ministries from where data is getting generated in other bodies which the government declares the data should be given to and it should be given in a non discriminatory manner to all private agencies if at all the government decides excludes the category of negative list of data sets example mentioned names religion that should not be mentioned right restricted access and shared for trusted users only right all the data will be shared with trusted users only right so trusted is a very important word government had used this word to uh, to to remove uh, from the list of the imports chinese 5g uh, telecom uh, telecom uh, uh, you know entities from import so it said that we are not sourcing from sourcing means purchasing buying from trusted sources and it referred to chinese companies right so it will not be selling or giving data to untrusted sources searchable data inventories yes there will be searchable inter entries right uh, if you go to edukme's website right now we are refurbishing the whole website right now there is no search option you can't search a content similarly what we need is a searchable data on all the data sets so that will be available integrated with open data open government data portal see open government data everything available to people open right just like vlc player is available for everybody to download just like wikipedia is available to everybody for access similarly open government data right high value data sets the government will also realize what are the high value data sets right indicative framework for high value data sets degree of importance in the market social economic benefits india ai strategy performance all of them these are the high value data sets right so which increase commerce which increase uh, efficiency in business services which increase um, uh, you know giving good services to people these are the high value data sets they have to be standardized right metadata metadata is information about the standards the standards which are being used for uh, creation of information for segregation of data more data about the data right so uh, metadata and data standards these standards should be compliant with the interoperability framework every device should be able to use it right open standards the data should be open to everybody institutional mechanism for formulation of domain specific metadata and data standards okay india data office price discovery will be set by india data office how much price to be paid for access of data or if it is to be made free of cost india data office right data anonymization and privacy preservation everybody's individual privacy will be preserved and data will be anonymized and for this uh, there will be some algorithms which will be given to ministries so that the data available at india data office is only randomized and not um, personalized right but then there are also tools to reengineer this right it can reengineer and bring back the actual entity these this is way this is the way you know if you if you if you anonymize or randomize the data it can be derandomized this is the fear of uh, the common public right so provisions of data sharing toolkits data sharing toolkits to all ministries to help assess and optimize the risk associated with data sharing and uh, all right so these are the uh, uh, key features what are the challenges contours of data not defined it is a draft policy so what data is see is it in public space what are the headings which have to be shared what not no it is not right what are the sensitive data no not known to people so it must be available to people right whatever is available that is around a 20 page document i have seen it all and i have put some screenshots about the contours of data protection is not mentioned clearly here as simple as that right tech companies tech companies want to monetize but here government is regulating it all so if the government wants to regulate government will want monetization of this so there is a push back from tech companies um, whose business model is based on monetization of large scale data collection model a government will be regulating the data na see so this is it power imbalance between government central government and state government state government will be asked to give data but possibly will not be uh, but possibly will may not be monetized let's see let's see right price mechanisms data set cannot be priced uniformly right all the data sets will have different cost 
for example uh, depending on the kind of data if if you want uh, mobile usage data of people probably it will be costing very high but if you want uh, vegetable purchase data possibly it could be less so we have to have a policy for mechanism of uh, uh, pricing right revenue generation see once the government starts to look at kaise revenue generate karna hai this will be one of the sources this has never been a source for uh, revenue generation for the government but once they see thousands of crores lakhs of crores then they will start looking at multiple of lakhs of crores and then the whole data will get uh, our data our data which will be collectivized which will become a collective data public data it will become a source of revenue for the government so how good is it every data parameter that we own individuals own society owns will be monetized by the government so this is a cause of concern at a at a level of uh, you know complete transformation of our ecosystems complete transformation right standardization is not there privacy factor has to be looked into right high value data sets what is it high value data set if if that is very important data to be shared with public that that to be shared with the, the private companies then uh, what is the cost that the individuals are paying that needs to be ascertained right undermines federalism less clarity on the entities so this is what it is right but then when you look at a policy like this this is only the part of criticism there are appreciations of it everything is going to get governed through digital technologies right uh, when we looked at uh, the uh electric vehicle battery storage storage causing problem that only needs to be removed that problem needs to be removed but digital data digital governance is here to stay that's the point so uh, looking at a, an issue of data governance we must um, uh, look at this policy from the perspective that uh, the challenges are sorted and the positives are exploited by the government and uh, public given due share right public might not receive the direct benefits but then india is a mixed economy a capitalist and a socialist economy so india will utilize that finances for development of persons only people only that's how we should take it right so when we look at the uh, draft uh, data policy uh, for digital governance in the country uh, what is the aim and objective of this policy in an, an objective right available to everybody with neutrality right only non personal data to be shared uh, the objective and aim is to ensure india becomes a 5 trillion dollar economy and the use of data has to be uh, an integral part of it this is it we studied about this then we understood what are the various aspects of data that can be uh, non personal ah we segregated the data right so non personal data on uh, three counts and four counts right four counts in the image and three counts in the description that i had given and personal data and sensitive data also shared by me later we also understood uh, uh, what are the kind of data financial data uh, commerce data medical data all of the data will become uh, the the data sets right so we understood that the architecture india data office ministries office right uh, data officers india data council these are the bodies which are going to administer this ecosystem uh, we also understood some of the principles uh, underneath and underlying uh, the data governance digital governance the principles of uh, anonymity the principle of security the principles of neutrality the principles of monetization the principle of uh, uh, high data uh, uh, high data sets we understood the concerns right not everything is clear we don't know the level of monetization going to happen we don't know the federal structure of it how the state will be uh, using these data how the people will adopt to a new data system how will it impact the whole economy see we have all taken covid vaccinations most of us have now us having taken the covid vaccinations and the impact it has on the whole economic system after on our health systems after 2 years after 3 years we don't know similarly this ecosystem once it it comes into in into play we don't know how it will impact the whole governance of data and whole economic setup we never knew that uh, uh the food the value of the food will be lesser than the value of many services that we receive but it has happened right the value of food is lesser as compared to the value of medical services attention that we receive the quality of education that we demand right it's lesser so if this data ecosystem is going to undermine everything after 5 years after a decade we don't know so many concerns around it as data has emerged as the new oil discuss the need to have data accessibility policy in india who can access data how much data should be accessed what is non personal data 
uh, what is to be made freely accessible, what is to be paid. So a lot of content about it and when you look at a question like this, you must diversify all your thoughts into where all data is getting generated, right? Not only about our age, social systems, customs that we follow, but what are our choices in, in, uh, in, in our life? Everything is generated through data governance. Right? Our movement is getting tracked through satellites, the traffic, the uh, movement in hospitals is all uh, being monitored. Not only that, uh, data regarding uh, as much as uh, attendance in school that is being administered. Right, Internet availability of traffic at each domain is known to everybody, to governments and authorities. Right, Every data regarding the profile of persons on Amazon's website is being tracked. How much purchasal do we make? What is our purchasing? Uh, capacity and ads are displayed according to the entity that we purchase. If I if I am purchasing diamonds and gold every time, uh, then they would show me ads like that. And if my purchasing power is uh, that of uh, uh, purchasing low end gadgets, they would show me those entities. Every person being monetized. So this is the need for data accessibility policy policy and how uh, possibly the uh, private sector is getting regulated. That is also a concern here. Okay. So now, if you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares, right? And let me see if there are some questions here. Okay. Oh, yes, you people uh, rightly mentioned about the Allen's law, right? So preserving the body integrity and accordingly molding themselves to the climate that people are in. Okay. Niranjan says, camel transforms their body temperature. In night time, they reduce their body temperature. Day time, they increase their body temperature. So, you know, for evading heat loss and so on. Uh, body temperature, it's about, uh, see, Allen's law. Allen's law is more about the limbs no, the limbs they become long or they become short, they become a little fat, thick skinned or short skinned. Diranjan, if you are here, the idea in Allen's law is to preserve body heat. Thick skin will preserve heat. Long skin, long body, you know, limbs, hands and legs will ensure that there is more radiation, more uh, exchange of heat. So long body in 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 tropical areas and shorter body in the temperate and uh, arctic areas right that is the main uh, thing about it i was reading uh, ostrich also doesn't drink water during times that is an that is an adaptation to the climate but is it allen's rule i doubt okay amran sir as we can see in ukraine crisis there is possible to in future that there is a huge demand for hackers by government or by private entity so what yes absolutely See, who are these people who are uh, trying to build Kaspersky or uh, uh, not an antivirus? Oh, my dear friends, these are people who are building virus only. People who can build virus and people who can build antivirus. The people who can build antivirus are the ones who are smarter than who can build virus. So, these people are nothing but, uh, you know, a generation, a couple of generations faster and smarter than uh, people building virus. There has to be, there needs to be increased demand by uh, the government agencies also for people who can build these entities. Absolutely true, right? It's not only happening in Ukraine, India also hires people. What is hackathon? Hackathon, driving solutions, right? For, if for digital devices, we, we will, it's open to everybody, right? So, when the government... He wants to preserve the, uh, the, the infrastructure, the critical infrastructure in the country. Remember, critical infrastructure, energy infrastructure, financial infrastructure, defense infrastructure, nuclear infrastructure, all of them are critical infrastructure. So if the government wants to preserve them, no matter what the person's profession is, if they can do it, government will hire them uh, immediately, right? No qualification, no 10th pass will be required for them, right? So absolutely, if yes, then there are good hacking institutes in India. If no, then why is there good hacking institute in India? Okay, and if no, then why hacker group group like Anonymous was so popularized popularized by government against Russia? Yeah, yeah, Anonymous. There is a group which is also. I think this is the group which challenged Elon Musk as well. No, 
I don't know much about them, the hacking, this hacking group. But all I know is that uh, India is not as good in uh, uh, this business as well, right? In in the business of hacking. See, this is all carried out. Uh, this is not open to everybody, no. Uh, this is not a part of uh, the um, surface web. This is a part of deep and dark web, right? Hacking business and anything related to it. So not available in public. Uh, but India is a peace loving country, we, have, we don't you know, impose these kind of uh, um, issues against our uh, opponents. Chinese hackers, it has been found, American hackers, they have been found, uh, you know, uh, hacking Indian uh, websites, Rajya Sabha TV, the Sansa TV was hacked just a couple of months back, Air India website was hacked, not only that, uh, uh, Municipal Corporation of Pimpri Chinchur was hacked, Dr. Reddy's uh, database was hacked. So many entities in India were hacked, right? American entities, Saudi Arabia, sorry, Aramco was hacked, right? American uh, uh, East, East, East American, uh, one of the largest uh, energy providers, its, uh, its, its, its database was shut down, right? One uh, very important uh, uh, meat provider, uh, I'm forgetting the name, I think SBS, that it, it, the website of the meat provider was uh, hacked, imagine that. So it's happening all around the world and this is largely happening for ransomware. If it is done by private agencies, it is also happening to gain an advantage over the other nations. The so UPI DigiLocker are good examples of how digital governance works. Data is also very important for the agile approach that we are following. Yes, economic planning, absolutely. Budget planning, absolutely true. Web3 is more towards data security. Web3 is this is it's a, it's a challenge whether web3 is about data security or not see on one hand we say it's about data security but on the other hand we are using personal data only to provide the personal services to everybody my my www will be open according to you know my interests so how about my data security that has been compromised at some place that is why it has been open in that way cookies data or the data that the you know, companies taken. So Web3 is that is the reason that is the reason Web3 is in question right now. Decentralized using uh, uh, the uh, uh, blockchain technology. So it will reduce further the centralization of authorities. No? So let's see what Web3 is going to proceed in. Milkmaid delivery. Personal. Okay, okay. Per, uh, yeah, public non-personal data, community non-personal data and private non-personal. Good enough. Thank you. Very good. Ashish, Yasha. Good one. Good. Okay, Rahul, sir, what kind of teaching is this? Okay, Rahul, we are we are studying topic a topic called as uh, uh, data governance in the country, and we are also understanding this topic draft India data accessibility and uh, use policy. Now, this is an important topic as far as UPSC exam is concerned, and any current affairs theme that must be studied for uh, uh, examinations conduct conducted under the federal uh, under the Union of India. Right. So state government examinations or awareness, but we delve deep to understand a theme in totality in this video. So uh, this is only a thematic video. There's, there's another video which we run uh, starting 6, 6.15 where we talk about the current affairs of the day. Right. So largely driven towards uh, the government examinations. So what are the chances it will not turn into state sponsored mass surveillance like China in the long run? Yes. Valid, valid point. We don't know if it 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 will turn into if it will turn into a state sponsored mass surveillance. We don't know. And today, when I am on the roads, see what happens is whenever whenever a police catches me, police person catches me driving the vehicle at a speed more than designated speed, they first do what they first do is take the number plate and then look at the person's identity card, the driving license of the person. And that person is marked forever uh, at a yellow mark that they have defaulted. So that is an offense that they have committed. The conduct, conduction of this offense for three times results in a penalty of not driving the vehicle. The uh, there will be uh, the driving license will be taken away from me for three months, and and, and they, this is like a penalty against me. So point I am communicating is this: there is so much fear amongst people if we are aware, even slightly, that it's not about political parties, but the whole way in which state functions, the government functions, right? 
It has happened in many countries and this is the reason that European companies, uh, European countries, they are the most advanced, they are at the helm of protecting the individual liberty here. So they say, Apple company, you can't install these uh, apps by yourself, it is for the person. You will be as a gatekeeper, remember the gatekeeper model, you will be as the gatekeeper and it's about the person who, whose choice will be respected before anything, right? But India is only a newbie here, right? America is more towards the... Uh, uh, private agencies, companies, Europe is more towards the personal data production. So Europe is one model that India could follow here. And we are not sure if this would turn into state-sponsored mass surveillance. Leave about surveillance. I'm speaking of mass level monetization. And once my phone chak gaya, then that's it. Okay, live given. Thank you, Pooja. We will hope to see you sometime. Uh, Vavani says, okay. Ethical hacking, good. So China, okay, Tiyasha, someone hacked Indigo website to know about his lost luggage, oh. Okay, great, great. Now, uh, this item is very fresh in your minds. Put this down in your uh, diaries as soon as possible as the video gets shot. It will be a great uh, learning. But if you do it later, you know that uh, it will not retain in your minds for a lot of time. So put it down immediately at night. Just look at it once. Just three authorities here. The concerns, five, six concerns, five, six important uh, features of this policy. What are the needs of data for the current and uh, future times? That's it. That's it. That's how every feature needs should be looked at. And um, I will see you all tomorrow evening and we will uh, start as as well on time this time onwards amlan kim good night then say thank you bhavani vivek netra ashish good night to all of you i will see you all tomorrow evening for current affairs discussion all right so doubts offline people who are viewing offline most welcome please put down your comments we will get back to you any queries any issues anything related to upsc preparation government exam preparation get back to us we will help you understand your preparation better and at least drive you in the direction in which you want to go. So, good night all of you. Preeti, Ashish, good night.